Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Magandang gabi po sa ating lahat. Ang sabi po dito sa aking uh, nakita no, dito sa Google, napakaganda po ito and I'm taking this. Sabi po dito, persistent prayer is not begging God for His blessing. Persistent prayer is knowing that God is the blessing. Ang ating Panginoon po, ang pagpapala sa ating buhay. Kung siya po ay patuloy nating hahanapin at patuloy po nating sasaliksikin, ang lahat na lamang ng ating pangangailangan ay susunod na lamang. Kaya nga sa oras po na ito, purihin natin ang Panginoon at sambahin ang ating Diyos ng buong puso. Hallelujah! Lord, we seek your face. We love you, Jesus. We honor your name, Lord God.
that we can always come to you, that we can always seek you, Lord.
our souls to another. Give us clean hands, yes, Lord. Give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. Oh, give us clean hands. Give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. ang patuloy po namin aawitin sa iyo patuloy Panginoon ang iiyak ng aming mga puso ang patuloy Panginoon o Diyos na ikaw ay maghari sa aming buhay that our hands our hearts will always be pure honoring you lifting your name O God thank you Jesus in Jesus name Blessed Wednesday to all who are joining us online. Welcome to Regents of Christ. Thank you for being with us on our midweek service. We are so grateful that God has brought you to us tonight. And we believe that God has something specific that He wants to say to you right now, no matter where you are. And we would love for you to do a couple of things for us. First, we would love to connect with you. Connect with us in the chat. Tell us where you are watching from. Next, share any notes or highlights that God impresses on your heart tonight. We would love to hear them, mga kapatid. And last, if this is your first time, kindly tell us in the chat so we could acknowledge you. We, we want to walk with you in your faith journey. So let's get ready for what God has in store for us tonight. Prepare your Bibles, your notebooks, and your pens, and let's get started. Let us all pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so excited tonight, Panginoon, for what you are about to teach us, O God. Lord, I pray na maging in tune kami sa spirit mo this evening. Lord, I pray na malina, maging malinaw, Panginoon, ang, ang pag-uusapan namin sa gabi ito. Holy Spirit, come and be with us this evening, wherever we are right now. Saan man dako kami ng mundo ngayon, Panginoon, Lord, I pray na iset aside mo na namin all of the distractions, Panginoon, at magpo-focus kami sa inyo sa gabing ito, O God. Have your way in our lives, Panginoon. Let there be transformation sa aming mga puso ang maganap ngayong gabing ito. Lord, maraming maraming salamat, O God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So for July, we are talking about the parables of Jesus. Uh, every Wednesday, we are unveiling Jesus' parables, understanding the principles in the kingdom of God as taught by Jesus. And we've learned about the parable of the unforgiving servant found in Matthew chapter 18, the parable of the vineyard workers found in Matthew chapter 20, and the parable of the shrewd manager found in Luke chapter 16. So it's been repeatedly taught to us that the parables are ordinary stories, ordinary teachings with heavenly meanings. And our Lord Jesus Christ was our master teacher. He is a master teacher. And some of his most well-known teachings are told in short stories called parables. And Jesus used parables because he wanted to provoke the imagination of the people and to invite them to see what God is doing from a new perspective. So Jesus is painting us a picture of the kingdom of God, allowing us to see the principles of the kingdom and the upside down values of the kingdom of God. So using parables, Jesus is compelling us to make a decision about his offer of God's kingdom. Are we going to reject him or accept him, ignore him or follow him? 
So in these parables na pinag-uusapan natin, we can see who Jesus was and what he was up to. And the gospel authors have preserved these parables so that now every generation of Jesus' followers can read and ponder them. We can all agree, mga kapatid, that God's kingdom is still at work even today. These parables that we are studying every Wednesday, every Saturday, every Sunday are still full of new surprises and challenges. Like a storehouse packed with a lot of treasures, all just waiting to be discovered. Amen po ba doon? And tonight, we have a new parable that we're going to unveil. The parable of the persistent widow and the unjust judge. Found in Luke chapter 18 verses 1 to 8. So let's open our Bibles on Luke chapter 18. And let us read verses 1 to 8. I will be reading from the New International Version. So maaari niyo po buksan yung mga Biblia o kaya naman po basahin niyo po yung mga ifa-flash sa inyong mga screen. Sige po, basahin na po natin verse 1. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with a plea. Grant me justice against my adversary. For some time, he refused. But finally, he said to himself, Even though I don't fear God or care what people think, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. And the Lord said in verse 6, Listen to what the unjust, unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? May the Lord bless his word. So this parable it is an illustrative lesson Jesus used to teach his disciples about prayer. So kung may goal ang bawat parable na itinuturo ni Jesus sa kanyang mga disipulo, ang goal ng parable na ito ay makikita natin sa verse 1. So the goal of the parable. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. Luke, the author of this book, introduces this lesson as a parable meant to show the disciples that they should always pray and not give up. Then end it with a question from Jesus, ang sinabi ni Jesus, When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? So bakit sa tingin nyo bigla itong nabanggit ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo? What made him bring this topic up? Now, as you see, Luke chapter 18 verses 1 to 8 is a part of an end-time teaching. Kung babalikan natin yung previous chapter sa Luke chapter 17, starting from verse 20, meron po kayo mga Bibles, pwede niyo pong buksan. The, pa the Pharisees asked Jesus when the kingdom of God was coming. What they really mean from that question is, when will the Messiah come and overthrow our enemies and establish the throne of David and bring peace and righteousness to the world? At ang sagot po ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo ay, the coming of the kingdom of God is not something that can be observed, nor will people, people say, here it is or there it is, because the kingdom of God is in your midst. So in verse 21, he warned against uh, looking for catastrophic signs and said the kingdom was quietly but powerfully in their midst. The final appearance of the Son of Man will not be hidden. Hindi ito tago. It will be obvious to all from horizon to horizon. It will be like a, light, a lightning. Then after yung sabihin yung mga yon, Jesus gave us a warning that whoever tries to keep their life will lose it. And wh whoever loses their life will preserve it. Sinabi niya din na, I tell you, on that night, two people will be in one bed. One will be taken and other left. The emphasis on what Jesus said was on readiness. Pagiging handa. Jesus will come suddenly and at an unexpected moment, mga kapatid. 
Lahat ng ito mangyayari. Kaya dapat, lagi tayong handa. For many will grow cold in the last days. May mga tao, kagaya ng sinabi ni Jesus sa Luke chapter 17, one will be taken and the other will be left behind. Kaya naman itinuro niya itong parable na ito patungkol sa pananalangin. Na dapat huwag tayong tumigil sa pananalangin. Dahil the moment, kapatid, na huminto tayo, the moment na mawala sa lifestyle natin yung pananalangin, unti-unti na rin na tayo ay napapalayo sa Diyos. And again, for many will grow cold in the last days. Prayer must come out out of us naturally. As Christians, dapat natural lang sa atin ang pananalangin. Jesus knew that we needed to be taught and encouraged constantly to always pray. Dahil alam niya na meron tayong mga obstacles na kakaharapin, na pipigil sa atin para manalangin. Alam ni Lord na meron tayong mga kakaharaping hindrances for an effective and constant prayer. That is why, Itinuro niya sa atin itong parable na ito that we might not lose heart in prayer. Hindi tayo mapanghinaan ng loob. Hindi tayo mag-give up sa pananalangin. Dahil napakadali na lang mapanghinaan ng loob sa pananalangin. Dahil may mga times talaga na hindi tayo laging convinced sa kapangyarihan ng panalangin. Mabilis tayong magdalawang isip o mag-doubt. Too often, prayer becomes a last resort. Instead of, instead of a first resource. Laging huling, uh, huling choice na lang lagi yung panalangin. Hindi yung una natin siya nagagawa. Kaya naman, gusto niyang itinu- ituro sa atin na maging tapat tayo sa pananalangin. Remember that Jesus lived a prayerful life. And we ought to live as Jesus lives. Amen po ba doon? So what we can learn or what can we learn from the parable of the persistent widow and the unjust judge? So first, let us talk about the content of the parable. Ano ba yung sinasabi ng parable? So makikita po natin to sa verses 2 to 5. So makikita natin dito, merong certain town and over that town may nakatirang isang unjust judge who apparently has no fear of God and no concern or compassion for the people. Konting segue lang po, in the Jewish community, a judge was expected to be impartial, to judge righteously, and to recognize that judgment ultimately belongs to God. Pero the judge in this story ay incompetent at unqualified dun sa trabaho niya. Justice was not being served. So this man was thoroughly wicked. Our Lord described him as unrighteous, just like the manager in Luke chapter 6, 16 verse 8, kung naalala niyo po yung parable of the shrewd manager. So kung makikita natin, the judge is not given to us as a symbol of God, but rather in contrast to him. And in that same town, merong isang widow. Pwede natin siyang describe as a needy widow. Needy siya. She repeatedly comes before the judge to plead her case. Paulit-ulit niyang pinupuntahan, kinakatok ni judge. According to the Jewish law, widows deserve a special protection under the justice system. But the unjust judge, dahil na wala siyang fear of God at wala siyang compassion sa tao, ignores her. Hindi siya pinapa, pinapansin. Pero kahit na ganon, the widow refuses to give up. Hindi sumuko. Yung widow. Then eventually, dahil nga persistent yung widow, porsigido siya na ma-receive niya yung justice na nire-request niya dun sa judge, ito ang nasabi ng unjust judge. Sabi nung sa verse 4 to 5, Even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. So a judge who did not fear God and had no compassion or concern for the people, in the end, answered the woman's request. The only reason he gave her what she wanted was because the woman wouldn't stop bothering him. So nakita natin yung persistence ng widow. At yung character Karakter niyang iyon ay pwede nating uh, main, maihalin tulad sa Canaanite woman dun sa Matthew chapter 15 verses 21 to 28. Kay Jacob who refuses to let go even when his leg was crippled. At kay Rachel who said to Jacob, 
give me children or else I die. Ganong klaseng persistence. At ang sabi ng unjust judge sa verse 5, Yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. In another translation sa New American Standard Bible po, ang sabi doon, Otherwise, by continually coming, she will wear me out. And sa New Living Translation, Because she is wearing me out with her constant request. So the words weary me or wear me out really means stun me or a metaphor taken, taken from boxers who bruise each other. It means hit under the eye. So ganun na yung pagkakasabi o pagkakadescribe ng judge sa sobrang pagpupursige ng widow, sa sobrang persistent ng widow na makuha niya yung justice na sinisik niya. Then the widow finally gets the justice she was seeking. At pagkatapos po no, at pagkatapos ikwento ni Jesus yung parable of the uh, persistent widow and the unjust judge, inexplain niya po yung point niya sa parable. Jesus explains his point. If an uncaring, unfit, ungodly judge answers with justice in the end, how much more will a loving, compassionate, caring, and holy father Give what is right to his children. And for our second point, the comparison. The comparison. So nabanggit ko kanina na the judge is not given to us as a symbol of God, but rather in contrast to him. Si Jesus did not give us this parable para sabihin na God was like the unjust judge na kailangan mong kulit-kulitin, kailangan mong i-wear out. But Jesus is telling us that God is unlike him, unlike the unjust judge. Hindi niya katulad yung judge. Hindi katulad ng Diyos yung ju judge dun sa parable. There are several reasons why the judge wasn't like our God who hears our prayers. Isa-isay natin yung mga uh, reasons bakit hindi sila magkatulad. So the judge didn't care about the people. Wala siyang pakialam dun sa mga tao. And our God cares for the people. Merong pakialam, merong concern yung, yung Diyos natin sa mga tao. The judge didn't bother to answer the pleas of the people. And God loves to answer our prayers. The judge was unjust. God is just. The judge was unfair. God is fair. The judge had no personal interest in the widow. God loves and cares for those who petition him. The judge answered the widow's cry out of pure self-interest. Kaya lang sinagot yung request ng widow kasi para sa sarili niya ng kapakanan. For his pure self-interest. And then God loves to bless people for their good. The judge was against the widow. God is on your side when you pray and not against you. So binigay sa atin itong illustration na ito para ipakita sa atin na if such an unrighteous man would respond to persistent pleas, would God, who is not only just but also loving and merciful, do so more readily? Makakita din natin dito na the widow had to overcome yung unwillingness ng judge to help. Kailangan niya ma-overcome yung unwillingness ng judge. May mga times na like the widow, dadating sa point na mapapaisip talaga tayo o mapapatanong kung willing ba talaga si God na sagutin yung ating mga panalangin. Kaya kailangan natin maging persistent to overcome God's unwillingness. Pero pag ganito yung mindset natin mga kapatid, Pag ganito yung nasa isip natin, namimiss natin yung point ng parable. Hindi sinasabi sa atin ni Jesus to always pray and not lose heart because God is unwilling, but because He isn't. God is more than willing and able to answer our prayers. Amen po ba doon? That is the truth and that is our encouragement. Kaya magpapatuloy tayo sa pananalangin. And sometimes, it really seems that God is reluctant to answer our prayers. Kasi madalas it takes time bago mangyari yung pinagpapray natin. We do not always get immediate results when we pray. May mga times din napapaisip tayo na kailangan natin siyang kulit-kulitin para mabago isip niya at maging willing siyang sagutin ang ating mga padalangin. 
But the truth is, delays in prayer are not needed to change God, but to change us. To change us. A persistent prayer brings a transforming element into our lives. Binibuild dito ang character natin. Ginagawa tayong Christ-like ng persistent prayer. It is a way that God builds into us a heart that cares about the things the same way He does. Di ba kapag lagi natin kasama ang isang tao, unti-unti tayo nagagaya doon sa kanya. Minsan kung paano siya manamit, di ba? The way he or she acts. And if, and if we always spend time with God in prayer, always praying, never ceasing to pray, we will capture the heart of God. His joy and desires will be our joy and desires as well. It will develop in us a character of God Himself. So, dinedemonstrate ng parable na ito na ang effective prayer requires persistence and faithfulness. A true and genuine disciple must have a prayer life that never gives up and is based on absolute trust and faith in God. Sabi nga po ni Pablo, ni Apostle Paul, sa so 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17, Pray without ceasing. At sa Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18, Praying Always, with all prayer, it's supplication in the Spirit. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. So ano naman na makikita natin dun sa persistent widow na maaari nating may apply sa ating prayer life o sa ating mga sarili? First, asking with knowledge. Asking with knowledge. In the parable, when the widow kept coming to the unjust judge, her plea was, grant me justice against my adversary. Sabi ko nga kanina, di ba, in the Jewish law, widows deserve a special protection under the justice system. So basahin natin yung Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 17 to 18. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality and accepts no bribes. He defends the cause of the fatherless and the widow and loves the foreigner residing among you, giving them food and clothing. So when the widow requested justice, this indicates that she wasn't asking for a favor. Baka pwede naman nabigyan mo ako ng justice? Hindi. She was asking for something that was rightfully hers. Alam ng widow na there are laws that will benefit her if she asks according to them. We can learn from the widow by asking with knowledge. Asking with knowledge not only includes knowing what is rightfully ours, but also the way we ask. So as citizens of God's kingdom, napakaraming bagay ang inilaan ng Diyos para sa atin. By knowing those things, we can ask according to them. Sabi nga po ng 1 John chapter 5, verse 15. 14, this is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to His will, He will hear us. So kapag nalaman natin ang kalooban ng Diyos para sa atin at ng Kanyang mga pangako na matatagpuan sa Kanyang salita, as the persistent widow did to the judge, we can confidently approach God with our requests. And we will ask them in Jesus' name. As John chapter 14, verse 14 said, You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Amen po ba doon? And ano pa? Having confidence. Having confidence. The meaning of confidence is the feeling or belief that one can rely on someone or something. A firm trust. It is also the state of feeling certain about the truth or something. About the truth of something. So naging confident yung widow na lapitan yung judge, napuntahan yung judge dahil supported ng Jewish law yung request niya. Alam niya na may nakalaan para sa kanya na special protection under the justice system. Natutunan natin na the widow asked with knowledge and she approached the judge with confidence. We can also have the confidence when we approach God in prayer because definitely we can rely on God. 
it is not just a feeling, yung feeling lang natin na mapagkahatiwalaan natin ng Diyos. Feeling ko, papahinggan niya ako. Pero dahil iyon ang katotohanan. We can have confidence when we approach God in prayer because we are asking according to His will. We are certain that His words are true and He is faithful. Heaven and earth will pass away, but His words will never pass away. Sabi nga sa Isaiah 55 verses 10 to 11, As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, verse 11, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. When he talks, his words accomplish his intended purpose. Kapag may binigay siya sa atin na salita, kapag may binigay siyang pangako, his words accomplish his intended purpose. The word of the Lord has power and it never fails in his intended purpose. It is an irrevocable word. That's why we will approach God and we can approach God with confidence. Babasahin ko ulit yung 1 John chapter 5 verse 14. This is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. Like what I said a while ago, we do not always get immediate results when we pray. But God's delay doesn't mean His answer is no. Because in our waiting time, in our waiting season, God is doing something in us. God is molding us, preparing us, transforming us, pruning us. So let us remain faithful to God. Let us always turn to Him. Huwag natin hayaan mga kapatid na sa iba na natin hanapin yung source. Yung mga sagot sa ating mga panalangin, sa mga hinihingi natin. Let prayer be our first resource and not our last. Our God is a righteous and wonderful judge. We come to a judge that is perfect and that 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 have a good that has a good character. We come to a judge who loves and cares for his children. We come to a judge who knows us and who is kind and generous. We come to a judge with promises to encourage us and to a judge who has a personal interest in our case or situations. And for our last point, the challenge. The challenge. Jesus and the lesson with the question, however, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? This suggests that when he returns, the true faith will be comparatively rare as in the days of Noah. The period before his return will be marked by persecution, apostasy, and unbelief. Many will grow cold in the last days. Many will be lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. At winarningan tayo ng Lord at ni Apostle Paul about dito. So how can we endure to the end? How can we make sure na hindi tayo matutulad sa asawa ni Lot na sobrang in love with this world to go all the way with Christ? How can we resist the temptations of this world? Paano tayo makakaresist sa temptation ng mundo na mas hanapin sa mundo ang mga bagay na dinadalangin natin? To turn to the world instead of turning to God. Kaya nga the Lord is teaching His people, teaching us this parable to have a faithful, never-ceasing, persistent prayer life until the day He returns. May mga danger na kakarapin ang mga disipulo ng Panginoon as they wait for His return. Kaya nga all the more, maging passionate tayo sa pananalangin. Maging faithful tayo hanggang sa pagdating muli ng ating Panginoong Jesus. So how can we endure? How can we be found with faith? How can we abo avoid being like those who are left in the judgment? We need to pray, pray, and pray. Jesus tells us this parable to give us the answer, the antidote for apostasy, the antidote for growing cold, the antidote for unbelief. Sabi nga po ng 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7, The end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and of sober mind, so that you may pray. 
the pressures of worldliness will become greater as the end draws near. Therefore, all the more must we watch and be sober unto prayer and not lose heart. Sabi po yan ni John Piper. The Lord wants to know if He will find any faithful prayer warriors left on earth when He returns. Meron kaya siyang dadatna na mga faithful prayer warriors? Alam ko kapatid, lahat tayo. Pwede tayo maging faithful prayer warriors. We will be among God's people still praying at Christ's second coming. Patuloy tayong mananalangin at magiging tapat tayo sa panalangin. Yes, makakaranas tayo ng mga bagyo ng buhay. And we need the grace of God to persevere and to not lose heart in prayer. And now, God, there is, God is reassuring us that He is not like the unjust judge. We can always go to Him in prayer. Our encouragement is this. Our God loves to answer our prayers, unlike the unjust judge, who has no concern for the people. That is why we will, we will be faithful and be persistent in prayer. We will not grow cold. It is a permanent calling for us believers, for us disciples of Jesus Christ, to be faithful and persistent in prayer. Let us dedicate our lives for the kingdom of God, mga kapatid. Like the persistent widow, we are needy, dependent sinners who trust in our gracious, loving, and merciful God alone to supply all of our needs. And, and as, as I end, for our conclusion, let us, miss, let us not miss the point of this parable. Huwag natin ma-miss yung point ng parable. That God who always does right and is filled with compassion for believers who suffer will certainly respond to His beloved ones who cry for His help. He may delay long, but He does so for good reason. And when He acts, His vengeance is swift. So let us assess our prayer life, mga kapatid. Are we still faithful and persistent in our prayers? Nananalangin pa ba tayo? Strong pa ba yung prayer, prayer life natin? O nakakalimutan na natin? Are we starting to grow cold and starting to give up on prayer? So, let us assess our prayer life. After this uh, message, after our midweek service, after listening sa message ng Panginoon sa gabing ito, kapatid, i-assess mo yung sarili mo. I-assess natin yung prayer life natin. Kamusta na ba yung prayer life ko? Tapat pa rin ba ako sa pananalangin? O sinukuan ko na kasi parang walang nangyayari? Parang ang tagal ng sagot ng Lord. The Lord wants to hear us and He loves answering our prayers. It may delay long, but surely God hears our prayers at meron na siyang ginagawa sa buhay natin. So let us remain faithful. Let us always turn to God in prayer. I hope na pag, pagdating niya when He returns, Madatnan niya tayo na tapat pa din na nananalangin, expecting for His return. Na dinadalangin, dinadalangin natin na maranata, Lord, come. That we are expectant and excited to meet God. Ganong klaseng faith at ganong klaseng uh, faithfulness ang nais ng Diyos para sa atin. And speaking of faithfulness, let us also be faithful in our giving. Doing it with joy in our hearts. Doing it out of love and worship to the Lord. Let us not neglect in our spiritual journey the area of giving. For we believe and we acknowledge the truth that what we have belongs to the Lord. Sabi nga po, ni, sabi nga po ng Psalms chapter 24 verse 1, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, and the world and all who lives in it. So kayo po sa, sa gabi ito mananalangin po. Papanalangin ko po kayo. Let us thank God for His message. And thank God for reminding us that He is a faithful God. Hindi siya katulad ng unjust judge na walang pakialam sa walang concern or compassion for the people. Let us thank God for reminding us of His character, that He is a faithful God, that He loves to hear our prayers, na, that His words are, are, uh, are true, and He is faithful to His word. And let us thank God for for this time na pag ma-assess natin yung prayer prayer life natin na mayroong magkakaroon ng transformation. 
let us uh, ask God na tulungan tayo maging faithful sa ating pananalangin, sa ating pagbibigay din ng swear. So, faithfulness in prayer until the day He returns. So, I will pray for you. Manalangin ka rin, kapatid. Let us ask God na katagpuin tayo sa, sa oras na to. Hallelujah, Lord. Panginoon, maraming maraming salamat, Panginoon, sa gabi ito. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your message na binigay mo sa amin sa gabing ito. Panginoon, nakikita niyo po yung bawat isa sa amin. Alam niyo po yung estado ng aming pananampalataya. Alam niyo po, Panginoon, o oh God, yung klase ng prayer life namin ngayon. Kung nanlalamig na ba kami, kung napanghinaan na ba kami ng loob at nag-give up na kami sa prayer. Lord, right now, oh God, show us, maging malinaw sa amin yung character mo, that you are our loving and caring and generous God na laging nakikinig sa amin pang, pang, mga panalangin. And you are willing and able to answer our prayers. So God, I pray na sa gabing ito, maging, maging malinaw yun sa amin at tumatak yun sa aming puso at isipan. Na every time, Panginoon, na dadaan kami sa mga pagsubok, dadaan kami sa mga paghirap, Lord, ang una namin gagawin is mananalangin kami. We will be expectant, Panginoon, and excited sa gagawin mo sa buhay namin, Panginoon, as we as we go dun sa mga pagsubok, O God. Lord, I pray na sa mga oras na to, hipuin mo po ang, ang mga tao, Panginoon. Hipuin mo po ang mga nakikinig sa oras na to, Panginoon. Ang kanilang mga puso. Lord, sa mga nakakaranas, Panginoon, ng panalamig, Panginoon, paypayan mo po ang kanilang mga ang kanilang mga apoy sa kanilang mga puso, O God. Increase the level of their faith in you, O God. E Lord, tulungan mo kaming maging tapat, Panginoon, na dadatnan mo kami when you return, O God. Dadatnan mo kami na tapat pa rin sa pananalangin, Lord, na, na expectant, Panginoon, expecting sa iyong pagbabalik, Panginoon. Lord, tulungan mo po ang bawat isa sa amin. Have your way, have your way, and thank you, Lord, kasi napakadami mong tinuro sa amin sa gabing ito, Panginoon. Thank you for touching our lives. Thank you for revealing your word to us. Thank you, Lord, for transformation dahil alam ko, Panginoon, alam namin na meron ka ng binabagong puso, may binabagong buhay, Panginoon. Lord, nais namin maging faithful sa inyo, Panginoon. Lord, help us dun sa mga hindrances, Panginoon, ng, ng effective and constant prayer, Lord. I pray na ma-overcome namin yung mga hindrances na yon at mananatili kaming tapat sa inyo, Panginoon. And Lord, allow us also to be faithful in our giving. Na Lord, Panginoon, hindi kami, hindi namin i-neglect yung area ng giving sa aming spiritual journey, Lord. But we will give and it, it is our worship to you. It is our, it is our, of love, Panginoon. Our motivation is our love for you, O God. So that we so so Panginoon, we will give, O God. We will give according to your to your will and for your glory alone, Panginoon. And Lord, thank you for letting us know, Panginoon, that we can approach you in confidence. With confidence, Panginoon, knowing that you are faithful, knowing, O God, na yung mga pangako mo, Panginoon, ay totoo. We can approach you with confidence kasi, Lord, yung dinadalangin namin is according to your will, according to your promises, O Panginoon. Lord, maraming maraming salamat. And Lord, thank you. We declare and we believe that our God is a righteous and wonderful judge. And we come to a judge that is perfect, that has a good character. We come to a judge who, who loves to take care for his children. We come to a judge who knows us and who is kind and generous. We come to a judge with promises to encourage us. We come to a judge who has a personal interest in our case, in our situations. Lord, maraming maraming salamat, O God. Thank you for touching us. Thank you for transforming our hearts. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. And let us use this time all throughout the week, for the rest of the week, Panginoon, to assess our prayer life. Show us, ano man po, Panginoon, yung gusto mo pang gawin namin, Panginoon. Lord, reveal it to us, Panginoon. Tulungan mo kami na maging tapat sa pananalang. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Maraming maraming salamat po sa pag sa ating midweek service at kita-kita po tayo sa darating na Sabado at darating na Linggo. Maraming salamat po and God bless us all.